So in the last video we looked at the ducking technique that we can do with the detector sidechain circuit. And if you remember, with that technique we cut the copy of the signal going to the detector sidechain circuit. Right? And instead of using that copy signal, we bring in a completely different signal into the detector sidechain circuit to trigger the compressor. So that way we can bring a kick drum into this detector sidechain circuit and that kick drum when it triggers the compressor it turns down the level on a drone synth. Or we can bring a talking DJ's voice into the detector sidechain circuit and when the DJ talks it triggers the compressor to turn down the level on the stereo music track passing through the compressor. Okay, So that technique where a different signal is turning down the level of the original signal passing through the compressor, those techniques are all ducking techniques because the trigger signal going into the detect sidechain circuit ducks down the original signal passing through the compressor. Okay. But there's another technique we can do with the detector sidechain circuit and that is frequency conscious compression. Right Now to do that we do use the copy signal for the detector sidechain circuit. So it works just as normal. The signal comes into the compressor, passes through the compressor and out the other side then a copy of that signal is split off and sent to the detector sidechain circuit. But what we do is, in the signal path of that copy signal going to the detector sidechain circuit, we place an EQ. Right? And after the copy of the signal has gone through the EQ, then it goes into the detector sidechain circuit. And therefore we can use the EQ to change the frequencies on the copy signal that are arriving at the detector sidechain circuit. And that way we can make the detector sidechain circuit only respond to certain frequencies in the copy signal. And that way we can make the compressor only compress certain frequencies. And that's called frequency conscious compression. Well, let me show you how that works. Here in Logic I've got three tracks. okay, And each of these tracks has got a console one channel strip on it, right? The soft tube console one channel strip. Now I'm using the console one channel strip because each channel strip has a compressor and we have a high and low cut filter here that we can switch into the side chain of the compressor. So we can equalize the copy of the signal that the side chain listens to, right? So here, for example, I've got a vocal on this track here. Okay, let's take the compressor off. And this vocal, I did it using a lot of S sounds. Everybody's super, super, special, super, super. Right, lots and lots of heavy S's. Now, if we use the high and the low cut, right, we can take all the bottom frequencies out of the signal, like that, and then we can use the high cut to take some of the top frequencies out, so that now we're just listening to this narrow range of frequencies in the vocal signal, around 4, 5, 6k. Everybody's super, super. Right? we can then feed this EQ'd signal into the side chain of the compressor. So the compressor is listening to this EQ'd copy of the vocal and only these frequencies are heard by the side chain. So only the frequencies in this narrow range here can go over threshold because these are the only frequencies that are getting through to the side chain. So only these high frequencies where the S's are in the vocal around the 4, 5, 6k mark. Only those frequencies can go over threshold and when they go over threshold they cause the compressor to turn down the level. So the compressor will turn down the level only on the loud essing sounds. And now we just switch this EQ'd version of the vocal Everybody's into the side chain of the compressor. Boom! Like that. Now listen to the signal being compressed and the side chain is only listening to those high frequencies where the S's are and every time a loud S comes the compressor turns that loud S down but it leaves everything else alone. 
Everybody super super special super super today's it's a ways. You hear how much the S's are being reduced? Take the compression out and have a listen. Everybody super super And now with the compressor, which is compressing the S sounds. Everybody super super It really squashes those S frequencies down. And that's because we're only sending those frequencies on the copy of the vocal signal to the side chain. So only the side chain can only hear those S frequencies in the vocal. It can't hear all the main body of the vocal, the bass end of the vocal or anything else, right? So when you compress those high frequencies up there on a vocal, the S sounds, that's called de-Sing, right? Okay, then here I've got a track, and this on this track I did a vocal using lots of B and P, B and P sounds, overloading bass frequencies onto the mic, like this. Boo, boo, boo. These are B and P and B and P words. B, B, B. Okay, this time we use the high cut to take all the upper end frequencies out of the vocal signal. So we're only listening to the bass end frequencies of the vocal. So only, and then we're going to feed this EQ'd copy of the signal into the side chain of the compressor. So the compressor can only hear the bass frequencies of the vocal. So only the bass frequencies can go over threshold and turn the compressor down. So every time a loud bass note happens, a loud P or B plosive overloading the mic with bass frequencies, the compressor reduces those down. Okay, let's hear that. Boo, boo, boo. These are B and P and B and P words. Listen to the difference when I take the compression out. Boo, boo, boo. These are B. And p and b and p words. And with the compression, compressing those bass frequencies. Boo, boo, boo. These are b and p and b and p words. Right. So there, we're compressing bass end frequencies, and that's not called de-essing. If it's called anything, it's called de-popping. Right. Because it's reducing the pop frequencies that are the bass frequencies that are causing popping uh, uh, artifacts like b and p right okay and then finally here i've got a drum kit okay just a stereo kit okay now if we use the high cut to take all the upper frequencies off the kit so we're only listening to the bass frequency of the kick drum we now feed this EQ'd copy of the kit signal into the side chain. The compressor can only hear the bass drum. Only the bass drum f frequencies are being analyzed by the side chain, so only the bass drum frequencies can go over threshold. So every time a bass drum goes over threshold, the compressor turns down the bass. It, it's going to compress the bass, but nothing above the bass drum. It's only going to compress the bass drum and nothing above, because it can't hear any frequencies above that bass drum. Okay. And have a listen. It, it's going to compress the kick really heavily. You hear the, comp the compressor going thwack, thwack, thwacking down that kick, so it's really crushed down and quite thin. But the snare has got a lot of body, and it, it's not really being compressed. Right? But if I use the low cut instead, and I... EQ it like this, taking all the bass frequencies out, and then switch that into the side chain of the compressor. Now, the kick drum won't be compressed because the side chain of the compressor can't hear any kick drum frequencies. It can only hear frequencies above the, fre the frequency of the bass drum. So it'll compress the top end snare sound, but it won't compress the kick drum. And you'll hear the kick drum isn't compressed, but the rest of the kit is. So 
So the, the kick drum is nice and big, it's not being compressed at all, but up the other end the snare's getting some compression. But if I roll that low cut off, as I roll it down you'll hear the kick starting to be compressed because the kick frequencies start getting into the side chain. Ready? Here we go. And now I'm rolling off the frequencies here on the low cut. The kick drum frequencies are now starting to get into the side chain and the kick starts to be heavily compressed. Roll the cut up so the bass drum frequencies aren't getting through to the side chain and the kick stops being compressed. Okay, so we can use this frequency conscious technique to EQ the sidechain signal on something like a stereo kit so the compressor compresses more of the upper end and less of the bottom bass end of the kit or the other way around. We can send a signal to the sidechain with the top end EQ taken out. So only the bass end of the kit is getting through to the sidechain and then the, the compressor will compress more of the kick drum on the bass end of the kit and less of the top end. You can tune a compressor to compress certain frequencies more than others. Or, in the case of the de-essing and the de-popping, we're tuning the compressor to listen to a very narrow specific band of sounds, in this case to remove S's. Everybody super super. Right. Or in this case, to remove loud popping bass uh, sounds. Boo, boo, boo. These are b and p and b and p words. Okay, so there you go. That is frequency conscious compression. Okay, and it's another technique we can do with the detect sidechain circuit. Right. And that's it. That's that's the two different things that you can do with the detect sidechain circuit: frequency conscious compression to do things like de-essing, de-popping, or causing a compressor to compress different frequency areas of a sound with more or less compression. And then the ducking technique, where we bring an external signal into the side chain, and that external signal triggers the compressor to compress a completely different signal passing through the compressor. There, They are your two techniques that we do with the compressor on the detector sidechain circuit. The ducking technique is what people call sidechaining, right? And then this EQ technique where we EQ the copy of the signal, that's called frequency conscious compression. All right? And there you go, that's that.